Hello, my name is Shahriar Shahriari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The subject of this lecture is the erdos zekeresh theorem and its proof. The way to watch these videos is to intermittently stopping the video and thinking about what am I about to say. Try to figure out what we're doing yourself and then let the video go and see how I explain it. So uh, let me just tell you what the goal of this lecture is. This is a short lecture and it only has one purpose, is to use the pigeonhole principle, which was the subject of a previous video, to prove the erdos zekeresh theorem. The pre pre pigeonhole principle is very trivial. It says that if you have n plus one pigeons and only n pigeonholes, and, and you put the pigeons in the pigeonholes, then at least two of the pigeons will go in the same pigeonhole. It's almost hard to believe that anything useful can come out of that principle. In a previous video, we saw some unexpected results that follow from it. And, and today's purpose is to prove another, uh, the, another fact, the erdos sekeresh theorem, um, using that. The erdos sekeresh theorem, what it says, it's a theorem from 1935. It says that if you have a positive integer n, pick 47, and, and then you pick n squared plus one real number. So if n was 47, you take 47 squared plus one real numbers, whatever they are, you do, I, I don't control what those are. You pick your not numbers, but it's a sequence. You put them in order. And then uh, that sequence, I'm going to guarantee that will contain a monotonic subsequence of length at least n plus one. And I will say in a second what that means. And moreover, uh, this is best possible in the sense that you can find a, se a sequence of n squared numbers, one less than the n squared plus one, um, in such a way uh, that you don't have such a monotonic subsequence of length n plus one. Like many things in combinatorics, the purpose of this theorem is not so much that it's useful in this or that way, but it's, um, it's to give us a training in terms of using techniques and seeing what kinds of proof techniques we can, how, how can we possibly prove such a, um, such a statement? But before we do that, uh, let's talk about what monotonic subsequences mean. So here's a sequence of numbers, minus 11, minus three, three, five, 17, 23, 37, 47, and 53. And you notice that they are increasing. I'm starting with a negative number and, and slowly going up. Such a sequence, is called an increasing sequence, or if you want to um, emphasize this, you will say strictly increasing sequence. Every term is bigger than the one uh, before that. Now, here's another sequence, minus 13, minus 7, 3, 3, 5, 11, 11, 23, 47. This is basically increasing also, except I'm allowing um, it to stop at some point so for there to be ties. Uh, such a sequence is called non-decreasing because it's never going down. It's going up or staying put but it's not going down. That's why it's called non-decreasing. Or uh, maybe a better word is that it's weakly increasing. I'm uh, saying weakly increasing is slightly better because you then do get the impression that mostly for the most part, it's going up. Now, uh, an increasing sequence is also a non-decreasing sequence uh, because non-decreasing just says that you're not going down. Um, and so if you're increasing, then you're, um, then you're non-decreasing with a vengeance. Uh, with non-decreasing, you're just allowing ties. Uh, somewhere along the way. Uh, corresponding to that is also decreasing sequences. So a de a strictly decreasing sequence is a sequence where every term is strictly smaller than the one before. And likewise, um, if you allow ties, um, then you get a sequence that is non-increasing because it's basically decreasing, but sometimes with ties, what, what we know for sure, it's not increasing. Or you, another word for that would be weakly decreasing. Now, most sequences, if you just walk down the street and look at a sequence, is probably neither decreasing nor increasing. Um, a sequence is called monotone um, if it's either non-increasing or non-decreasing. So basically, a monotone sequence is a sequence of numbers that's either going up or going down with ties allowed. You, you allow at certain points to stay put and then go further down. Okay, so that's what a monotone sequence is, either going up or going down. Um, the length of a sequence, we use that word sometimes, is the number of terms. The number of numbers in that sequence uh, is called the length of the sequence. Okay, now consider this sequence, 4, 2, 5, 7, 3, 1, 9, 10, 6, 8. This is neither um, increasing um, uh, or, or decreasing or, or, or uh, uh, weakly increasing or weakly decreasing. It's not monotone uh, because it, it goes down, but then goes up back again, down, back up again, and so forth. However, Within this sequence, you can pick out 
uh, numbers, four, five, seven, nine, ten. This is called a subsequence, which is monotone. And this happens to be a monotone subsequence of length five, just five numbers. I found five numbers, four, five, seven, nine, ten, that are increasing within that. That's called a monotone subsequence of length five. Um, there are other ones, like for example, seven, three, one is all is a decreasing sequence, and that's an example of a monotone sequence, is a monotonic subsequence of length three. In this, um, uh, in this sequence. And that's what we're interested in. So you might, for example, think of these numbers as heights of people. You have so many people standing and they, they have different heights. And, and if you want a monotonic subsequence, you want to ask a few of them to uh, walk forward so that they are um, standing, those the ones that move forward, standing according to height, either going down or up. And you can think of many other um, examples um, as such. Okay, so now, the question um, that Eridosh and Zechariah tried to answer, and you might very well ask why they would ask this question. And again, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, is the fact that the proof is really nice. Um, the proof we give here is not uh, their proof, but, uh, uh, but, but, but maybe nicer proof even. So given a sequence of length 10, um, if you have 10 numbers and put them in, sequ in a sequence, are you always guaranteed a monotonic subsequence of length five? Can you always find five of them um, that, um, uh, that, that are monotonic? And the answer to that happens to be no. And, uh, and one can give an example. Um, and if the answer is no, then what about a monotonic subsequence of length four? Are you always guaranteed to have one? It's not clear. Again, stop the video. Try to think if you can answer this. If I give you 10 numbers, but I don't tell you what the numbers are, if I tell you what the numbers are, it's easy to try to figure out what the largest monotonic subsequences. It could be 10 because it could be in order. But if I just give you some random uh, uh, num num number of um, uh, 10 numbers, then try to figure out, can you prove that there always will be four of them that you can pick out uh, that are either going up or down, ties allowed. Um, now the Eridor Sekeresh theorem says that uh, with uh, every sequence of length 10 has a monotonic subsequence of length at least four. Um, so we might have more, but at least you're guaranteed this four. So this is a prediction that Erdos and Zekeresh make. It's not at all clear. So this is where mathematics comes in and when proofs come in, because we want to see why that's true. And as I said, the real reason we want to do that is because the proof is actually what's interesting. And it's not just about 10 and 4. Uh, the more general statement is that if you have a sequence of length n squared plus 1, then it always will have a monotonic subsequence of length at least n plus one. Now, if n is three, then three squared plus one, that will be 10, and three plus one will be four. So we will get that every sequence of length 10 has a subsequence of length at least four. But n could be some other numbers. It could be, for example, six. If it's six, then n squared plus one is 37. It says that if you write down 37 numbers, um, any numbers you like, then um, you are guaranteed seven of them, n plus one, six plus one, um, seven of them that you can pick out a subsequence that's going to be monotone. Okay, so now let's try to prove the theorem. So again, I'm going to restate it. Uh, I'll say it again. Uh, Eridor Zekeres theorem of 1935, every sequence of length n squared plus one has a monotone subsequence of length at least n plus one. Why is that true? Okay, if you can prove that, then you don't need to watch this video. In fact, that's that's preferable. Um, but it's not. But but I bet you, it's, if you haven't seen this, it's not going to be that easy uh, to come up with an argument for why is it that every sequence of length n squared plus one has a monotone subsequence of length at least n plus one. It's clever proof. This particular proof um, is a proof from 1959 um, due to Seidenberg. Okay, so a sequence is given to us. So someone has walked through the door and given us n squared plus one numbers, and I've written them down. A1 is the first one, A2 is the second one, A sub n squared plus one is the last one. I've written them down, I don't know what they are. And I've, I don't want to convince you that there is at least a monotone subsequence of length at least n plus one. Okay, so I'm gonna make a table. The, uh, on the top of the table, I'll write down the sequence. So A1, A2, A3, A squared, A n squared plus one. So these are numbers. I mean, if you give me an actual sequence, then this would be actual numbers. I, for the purpose of my proof, I have to leave them as, uh, as A1 and A2 and A3 because I don't know what the numbers are. Then in the second row, I'm going to put another set of numbers. So what are these? So it, D, this D1, D2, D3, Dn squared, Dn squared plus 1 are numbers that I'm going to get from that first row. So what are they? 
Well, each di is the length of the longest non-increasing subsequence starting at ai. So for example, what's d3? Then I look at a3 and I say, okay, if I start with a3, what's the uh, longest non-increasing? So that means basically decreasing, but sometimes maybe ties, starting at a3 going forward. So I'll say, okay, if I start at a3, forget everything that came before that, start at a3, What's the longest non-increasing subsequence that um, I, can, I can find? How many terms are there in there? Put that number, that number is D3. Under A47, I will look and see that how many, what's the longest non-increasing subsequence starting at A47 going forward again? What's the longest I can find? And I will put that under A47 and that's gonna be D47. Okay, but I have another row in my table and that row, I'm going to call them E1, E2 through EN squared plus one. So what are these? These are uh, the corresponding thing. They're the length of the longest non-decreasing sequence, subsequence. Basically, one's going up starting at AI. So E3 is start again at A3. We look and see what's the longest uh, subsequence going up with ties allowed starting at A3. The one going up, how many terms are in there? I put that's E3. Going down, that's D3. Okay. So I've got uh, uh, these numbers that are giving me information about what the longest one is and what the lowest one is. So what do I want to prove? I want to prove that at least one of these numbers is n plus one. Uh, like that's what I want to show. Um, and and I, I will get that in a second. But before I do that, I'm going to ask it sort of a clever question. Is it possible that for two of these columns, both the Ds and the Es will be the same? So is it possible, for example, for A5 and A47, the Ds that I put is the same and the Es that I put are the same? Is that possible? Okay, so think about that. So A5 and A47, um, it, it might be that A5 is less than A47. Whatever the number A5 is, that mystery number, might be less than or equal to A47. If that's the case, then whatever increasing or non-decreasing sequence you can start with at A47, you can augment it by adding A5 right at the beginning because A5 is less than or equal to that. So if that subsequence is going up, starting with A5 and then going on with those subsequence will still be a, a non-decreasing subsequence. Then that, that tells me that the E for um, A5 will have to be at least one more than the E for a4, A47, because whatever the longest subsequence that was non-decreasing, um, that was going up, that you started A47, the one at um, A5, you might do much better, but at least you can do one better because you can just take that same subsequence and add A5 to it. Likewise, but the A5 might not be less than or equal to A47. A5 might be greater or equal to A47. But if that's the case, then um, uh, we can do the same argument with decreasing sequence or non-increasing sequences. And so then we will know that D5 must be at least one more, uh, one bigger than e, uh, D47. So the point is that it could be that uh, the two Ds are the same, or it could be that the two Es are the same in the, sa in the same columns, but you can't have both pairs be the same. You can't have D2 and E2 be the same as D47 and E47. That's just not possible because depending again on what which one of the A's is bigger than which one, uh, one of those subsequent, you, you will be able to do better uh, with either non-decreasing or non-increasing subsequences starting at, 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 at that first one. Okay, so the answer here is no. It's not possible to have DI and DJ be the same and DI and EJ uh, be the same as well. Okay. Now let's go on to prove. Again, what we want to prove is that one of these numbers, one of the Ds and Es is n plus one. So we'll do this a proof by contradiction. We assume that they're not. So assume that there's no monotone subsequence of length n plus one. What does that mean? That means that the numbers Ds and the Es are all either one, two, all the way till n, but they can't be n plus one or anything larger. So they're numbers between one and n. Okay, now if you look at pairs, like each one of D1, E1, uh, D2, E2, D3, E3, how many choices do we have for these pairs? Well, I have N choices for DI, 
because it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be all the way to n, but it can't be any more because we're proving by contradiction. Um, and we're assuming that um, there is no monotone subsequence of length n plus one or more. And E can be one through n also. So there's n choices for D and regardless of what I choose for D, there's n choices for E and that makes n times n, n squared choices for these pairs. But how many pairs do I have? I have n squared plus one pairs. So these pairs of numbers are my pigeons. I have n squared plus one pigeons and the pigeon holes are these possibilities, the n squared possibilities. It could be one, 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 two, three, one, n, 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 n minus five. Uh, those are the kinds of possibilities that I have, but there's n squared of them. And I have n squared plus one pairs, which means that by the pigeonhole principle, at least two of the pairs must be the same. But that's a contradiction. We argued earlier that the two pairs cannot be the same. So there's something wrong. What's wrong? It's our assumption that uh, the length of the, uh, the no monotone subsequence of length n plus one. There must have been, these numbers cannot be limited to one true n, because if you do that, then you have too many pigeons for your pigeonholes. And that's the end of the proof. And uh, this proof is nice. If you, again, if to, to appreciate it, the thing to do is try to come up with an argument yourself. If you, don't, if you don't think this is nice, try to come up with one yourself. And then you will agree that this is a really nice proof. Okay, one last thing, could we do better? Um, I mean, do we actually need n squared plus one terms to come up with a, a monotone subsequence of length n plus one? That's what we did. Do we actually need all n squared plus one terms or, or maybe I can, I can do better? Maybe, maybe um, there was overkill here. Um, and, and, and no, the answer is no, that's, that, that's the, sort of the best possible. Um, and here's a sequence of numbers. This is the, the numbers in this sequence are one through n squared, but I've written them in a funny way. So I've started with n and then gone down to n minus one, n minus two, all the way till one. Then I've gone back up to two n and I've gone again down to n plus one, back up to three n, down to two n plus one and so forth. Um, uh, and the last row is n squared, n squared minus one, all the way till n squared minus n minus plus one. Um, so in every row, there's n numbers. Every row is decreasing. Um, and, and there are n, um, um, n rows um, also, the first row, the second row, the third row, and the nth row. Now, if you look at this sequence, the largest monotone decrease subsequences, this, there's n squared terms here. And... Uh, the longest monotonic subsequence is of length n, because if you want one that there's no ties, if you want it to be decreasing, you have to stay within a row because whatever row you are, the next rows are all bigger numbers. So you would have to start with a row within a row and in every row has only n terms. So you can't do better than n if you want a decreasing sequence. On the other hand, if you want an increasing sequence, then you can't stay within a row because rows are just going down. So you have to just go from one row to the other and there's only n rows. So the best you can do is just take one from the first row, one from the second row, one from the third row, one from the nth row, and you will get a monotonic subsequence of length n. And again, um, this is, uh, th does not have a monotonic subsequence of length n plus one. But erdor sekeres theorem says is that if you add one more term anywhere, then you will have n squared plus one terms, and then you are guaranteed a monotone subsequence of length n plus one. So um, it, that's, the, it, the, that's the way in which the erdor sekeres theorem is best possible, meaning that um, n squared plus one is the threshold, right? As soon as you get to n squared plus one, you will have, you, you have this guarantee of n plus one uh, monotone subsequence of length of n plus one. Now you could have a, a, a sequence of n squared terms where the whole thing is monotone. That's not the issue. The issue is that if your adversary, someone else like me comes up with a sequence, can you guarantee that there is a, a monotone subsequence of length n plus one? And Erdor Sekeresh tells us that if you have n squared plus one terms, you can guarantee that. And this example shows that if you have n squared terms, you can't guarantee that. This is the end of this lecture. I will see you in the next one.